Hi there, Gary Stearman with another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. Bob Ulrich in studio with me today. It is the 13th of March already. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Very good to be here with you. And by the way, it's, it's good to have Bob back. Bob's been through a lot lately, as you know, with the passing away of his father and uh, a, a long travel back to the East Coast. And uh, the schedule under which we operate is so tight that uh, I'm amazed that Bob can be up and running again, but he is, and I'm, it's good to have you here. Bob has a 48-page magazine to proofread today, <laughs> so as soon as I get off the set, I'm going to hit the ground running. Speaking of the magazine, we have uh, an article to talk about today in the March 2012 edition of Prophecy in the News. I've written an article uh, entitled, Satan is a Socialist. And in fact, that's a flat statement which can be verified from Scripture, Bob. And it is a fascinating article. In fact, we could probably get four television programs just out of the meat in this one article. It's just so complicated and detailed. But... Uh, just a wonderful uh, overview of where our economy is today, where the world's economy are today, and who's behind all of this organized chaos. Well, let's begin in Scripture. And um, in Ezekiel 28, there is a, uh, a dissertation upon the prince of Tyrus. Uh, and in Ezekiel 28, 2, it says, Son of man, say against the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. And, and it goes on then. It establishes this prince of Tyre to be almost godlike in his majesty. Now, the uh, uh, Phoenician dynasties were world traders. Uh, Phoenicia being on the east coast uh, of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, called Tyre uh, in the Bible, was a huge global trader, Bob. And the king of Tyre, and as a matter of fact, Hiram, king of Tyre, helped Solomon build the temple and, and provided all the building materials from all over the world, was a global trader. And he therefore becomes the model of international trade. And later on in Ezekiel 28, we have... Uh, in, uh, in verse 12, a statement that takes the prince of Tyre up to a new level. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, or Tyre, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect sin, and beauty. And we discover that the prince of Tyre is Hiram, that is the Phoenician traders, the king of Tyre, is Satan himself. Mm. And Tyre is the Bible's code word for global trade. It's really interesting. And once you know that, it'll really clear up a lot of mysteries. Well, Gary, you're, you're the only one that I know of that's ever written about this in any great length. Mystery Babylon, Commercial Babylon, the King of Tyre, the Prince of Tyre, the Merchants of Tarshish. I mean, this is something you've probably been covering for good 10 years you know long. Uh, I think maybe 15 is more like it uh, but for many years we've written about what is called in today's parlance the law of the sea it actually has a name Bob in Latin it's called Lex Mercatoria going all the way back to the Romans uh, after the Phoenicians fell and, and after uh, the Greeks sort of turned their power over to the Romans the Romans happily took up this uh, this global trade and, and took up where the king of Tyre had left off. And their ships went all over the world, literally. And wherever they uh, came into port, they would trade, they would buy, and they would sell. And they used a system which they called in Latin credo, which means credit. And out of that system was born the idea of paper money. And so this idea of world trade, the ships of Tarshish, is really the founding idea that comes to a prophetic conclusion in Revelation where we see the merchant ships of Mystery Babylon the Great at long last out there in the sea bemoaning the destruction of Mystery Babylon because that's where they got all their money. Our, our world today really is consumed by the acquisition of wealth. It is. By the acquisition of possessions and things and building a kingdom and building stability for the future and having that security 
And of course, we know there really is no security in this world. In fact, the, the whole prophecy of the king of Tyre and the Satan is a socialist article really just kind of take us to a latter-day prophecy. And, and I think we find ourselves at that point in time today, don't we? We do. We find ourselves at the point where uh, every country on earth is struggling with the question of wealth and how to handle wealth, uh, with equality in wealth. How, how do the poor get their fair share? Uh, how do we tax the rich and get the money of the, from the rich man down into the pockets of the poor man? How do we redistribute? What kind of a social system do we set up that will ultimately <clears throat> give every man a fair shake? And of course, that's the key word, fair. And the Bible speaks about this in huge volume because it talks about the global traders and the world trade and the world economy. And finally, it culminates, Bob, in the prophecy of commercial Babylon, Revelation 17, 18, and the destruction of Mystery Babylon the Great. So the whole question of socialism is subsumed under Bible prophecy. And uh, in, uh, in the general subject is the merchant's of Tyre or the merchants of Tarshish. Well, you, you read the words of uh, the brother of Jesus, James, <coughs> in uh, James chapter 5, and you know these are familiar words to our audience. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. This is interesting. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You know, it's it's funny. The world is consumed with acquiring gold and silver. That's I see right. The country of China, I mean, they, from what I read, is just acquiring as much gold as they can get their hands on to hold on as some form of security. But yet James says that that gold and silver won't do any good in the last days, will it? That's right, because uh, the economy, uh, although many people say that it's based upon gold, actually is a fiat economy. In other words. Someone at the top can declare value, and, and if that someone has enough power, then gold essentially becomes worthless. It's what I say is worth something that is what counts. And of course, the, with the Antichrist, it's not gold, it's the mark of the beast. Didn't that, that, that happen back in the 1930s where it became illegal to actually own gold? That's right. You know, with one rubber stamp, you can no <laughs> longer own that gold and silver. And that always, I always wonder if that would ever happen again. Uh, the Bible seems to say that it will, and the Antichrist is going to stand up with his mark of the beast, which basically is a, uh, a system of trade that assures fairness to everybody. In other words, if you just take that mark, uh, you'll get your fair share of the economy. I'm sure that will be his. And on the surface, can you blame people for wanting their fair share? You know, you see the, no. the rich people, you see these professional athletes making 30 and 40 million dollars a year, and you see the Wall Street bankers and financiers and, and just taking people to the cleaners at the expense of the poor. We see people all over the world starving to death. So you, you can't blame people for wanting their piece of the pie, can you? No, you can't. Uh, one more time, this is the, uh, the March Prophecy in the News. The article is called Satan is a Socialist. And that may seem a little harsh, but it's the truth. I mean, and the Bible really bears it out. So I, I wish you'd read the whole article. And, uh, and by the way, we'd love to hear your comments. Uh, you know our email address and, and uh, our snail mail address, for that matter. And we'd love to uh, receive your comments. Gary, <coughs> the April issue of our magazine and the people who watch every day are going to just love what Gary's written in the April publication. You've written an article, the cover article is The Antichrist a Muslim. Mm. And <clears throat> you just seem to love stirring up trouble, don't you? <laughs> and, you know, there is a lot of popular stuff being written today about, about Satan being a Muslim and the Mahdi coming out of the well. And I encouraged you, as I have a bad habit of doing, about taking this on as a challenge and looking at this from a biblical perspective. The April issue of the magazine is going to have that as the feature article. I've already read it, and it is fantastic. You need to subscribe to our publication today if you don't already. I've got three books here. This is one of the special offers in our magazine. It's the Mysteries of the Bible subscription package. $29.95. You get a one-year subscription of the magazine. You get these three books for free. Now, not too many people give away 
$40 worth of books for free just for subscribing to our publication. We want you to get the magazine every month. We want to give you these free books. This is a great deal. These are amongst three of the most fascinating mm -hmm. books I've ever read. There it is. And Bob, as always, you've come up with a good offer, and I hope you take advantage of it. We do want you to uh, uh, follow uh, our monthly magazine because we consider ourselves to be on the cutting edge of prophetic study of the Bible. Bob, let's do this again. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Gary Stearman reminding you, as always, to keep looking up.